Even before its broadcast, the interview is making news. And for more details, I'm joined in by our correspondent, Julia Chapman, who's joining us live from Moscow this hour. Julia, a very warm welcome to you. Now, let me begin by asking you, is the Russian president using the U.S. government's handling of the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter protests to cover up his own hollow handling of the COVID-19 crisis in Russia, which has the third highest case load in the world? Well, he is certainly trying to distract from the situation here in Russia by casting blame elsewhere in the world. Nevertheless, there is some reasonable ground for the comments that he made, saying uh, that in the U.S. there had been deep political divisions that had led to some of the mishandling of the COVID-19 crisis. But it's that comment about minimal losses here in Russia that will certainly be raising eyebrows, not least among the families of the more than 7,000 people who have been killed by the virus here in Russia. Now, as you mentioned, that's roughly a 1% uh, mortality rate given the very high number of overall cases of coronavirus here in Russia. More than half a million people have been confirmed to have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in the country. It's the third highest overall number in the world. But the death toll has been relatively low compared to countries with similar sized outbreaks the death toll has been very insignificant. Now, part of that is because of the methodology that has been used to count coronavirus deaths. In the previous weeks, we've seen deaths not being counted in that overall tally, even if patients had COVID-19. But if, the, if coronavirus was not deemed to be the main reason for their deaths, their deaths would not necessarily be included in the overall tally. Now, that methodology, methodology has changed somewhat. Right. They are now starting to be counted, but we haven't yet seen that feed into the overall numbers. Right, Julian, yet questions persist, of course, on Russia's record keeping of the coronavirus numbers, as you just pointed out. Um, and if so, why have the numbers been falsified? Well, there's no evidence to suggest that they have been falsified. Uh, there are suggestions that in the early stages of the outbreak, the numbers of overall cases were low. It seemed incredible that Russia uh, was able to avoid the worst of the crisis for a long time. That, in the end, has proven to not be the case. It just came later to Russia than it did to many other countries. Now, Russia credits early border closures for that. Uh, and as I say, the high number of overall cases, Russia says, is down to overall testing. They've been testing very widely. Russia has one of the widest testing rates in the world. Uh, but there is certainly still criticism that uh, in the early days of the outbreak, there might have been playing down the severity of it. Although when the uh, outbreak and the severity of the outbreak did become apparent, they very quickly moved into lockdown measures. However, those are already starting to be eased in places like Moscow, where the number of cases has fallen significantly in recent weeks. Moscow was the epicenter of Russia's coronavirus right. outbreak. It no longer is. But there are big concerns that now that the outbreak is moving from the cities to the regions, uh, those parts of Russia will be less able to handle the pandemic. Right. It's interesting, Julia, that you mentioned Moscow, because is Moscow ready just yet to host the Victory Day Parade on June 24th? That is one of the accusations that Russia and Russian officials are pressing ahead with lockdown easing faster than they otherwise would have because they're very keen to see this big patriotic parade take place next week. And then immediately afterwards, a nationwide referendum is going to be held. Now, that vote uh, is on constitutional amendments for the Russian constitution, one of which would see President Vladimir Putin's presidential terms annulled, which would allow him to start from scratch and run for a further two presidential terms, possibly keeping him in power as late as 2036. Now, that referendum, and indeed the parade as well, was uh, postponed from a couple of months ago. It had to be postponed due to public health concerns over the pandemic. But now that Moscow has seen cases falling, officials have been pressing ahead with both the vote and the parade. And there are certainly concerns that after those events take place, we'll see another uh, spike in coronavirus cases that could precipitate another lockdown here. Right. Julia, also allow me to refer to the interview by referring to the quote-unquote defeated party's bogus stories ever since Donald Trump won the elections in the backdrop of alleged Russian interference in the 2016 U.S. elections, how do you view the Russian president's fresh comments considering this is yet another election year for the United States? 
It is indeed. Russia has time and again denied any interference in the U.S. election. It had, of course, been accused of creating so-called troll farms where uh, people sitting on computers were accused of uh, spreading disinformation on social media in the U.S. There have been accusations from U.S. intelligence agencies that the Russian leadership was behind such efforts. The Russian government has denied that continuously, President Putin reiterating that denial in this interview. And he wants to make it clear that uh, Russia has nothing to do with what's going on in the U.S. And he's pointing to all the unrest that we've seen in recent weeks with all the protests growing, the Black Lives, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement growing there, uh, and a lot of unease between parties and different political backgrounds in the United States. President Putin and other Russian officials have been pointing to that unrest, saying that they don't need Russia's help to stir any problems, any tensions in the United States ahead of the U.S. election. That's happening all on its own. Right, Julia. And of course, uh, come November and the United States and the world will know for sure what the reality is. On that note, thank you so much, Julia Chapman, for bringing us all those details and sharing your precious perspective.